All right, season three, episode three, DPO, big Giovanni Ribisi fan, have been for many, many years, grew up on films like, uh, the one I watched the most with him would have been Suburbia, Mm. which is a Richard Linklater film that he made uh, right around the same time as Dazed and Confused. I love it. It's it's like his overlooked film from that era. I you know, Dazed and Confused obviously got all the accolades and all the attention, but I watched I watched that a decent amount, but I watched Suburbia way more. I loved it. That's where I got introduced to Steve Zahn as well as Nikki Cat. Awesome fucking film. Uh, Boiler Room, which was the precursor to Wolf of Wall Street. Um, that's Jordan Belfort as well, but we don't focus on his character. We focus on like the traitors, mm. uh, which De- uh, Giovanni Ribisi, Nikki Cat as well. Vin Diesel, that's a very young Vin Diesel. Um, they're working for Jordan Belfort. They don't really ever say his name in it, but it is supposed to be that same group of people that the wolf of wall street is based on uh of course he was in gone in 60 seconds and the other sister which i showed kaylee with uh juliette lewis who we just saw at mad monster yeah. um another favorite of mine and and i can t- i can name tons of other films with giovanni so seeing giovanni Ribisi in here is really cool this is an episode that played a ton um on loop at night mm. when i was a when i was a kid and so this is one I've actually seen quite a bit. It's been a long time since I've seen it. But not only do we get Giovanni Ribisi in here, we also get a very young, very unknown Jack Black here yeah. as well. This would have been around the similar times to where he was in movies um, as like smaller characters, mm. like the bully in The NeverEnding Story 3, or in The Cable Guy, or uh, when him and like Kyle Gass from Tenacious D show up in Biodome, you know, before Jack Black became Jack Black. Uh, he was in a bunch of like random things as like a small background character, uh, and obviously now he's he's huge, both in physical stature and uh, in popularity. <laughs> he's not huge. He's a big boy. He's a big boy. He's a big boy. He is a very agile big boy. I'll give him that. That motherfucker can move I for think, someone um, as, as fat as him. Jack Black has like. Especially in this episode, um, or in this role, I should say, like he's not really a bully or anything in this, but I could definitely see how he could play like a bully. Oh yeah, pretty easily. But I think most people, like now, we know him for his comedy and and all of that. Um, but yeah, this is a great episode. I think this is a very iconic X Files episode, and um, it's great. It's just a really good one. This is a really nice like monster of the week type of episode even though there's no monster necessarily i mean i guess yeah the guy is, is, yeah i mean he's uh, the monster yeah um but he's a human but it's cool yeah i think it's a great concept i mean all the monsters that we know in the world are humans that's true so that's true what else is new yeah um but yeah i mean i'm always fascinated by these random episodes that just seem to be stacked with actors that went on to be big stars. Mm. It's almost like the casting director um, was like different that day. <laughs> and it was just like could spot talent. They yeah. went like the outsiders where you have like every big star of the freaking eighties before they yeah. were them. Right. Like the outsiders is kind of always known for that film that casted Tom Cruise and Matt Dillon and C. Thomas Howell and Ralph Macchio and all these people like before they were anybody. And it's like the cast is fucking insane. Like, who was this casting director and why are they not working on every movie? <laughs> um, so I don't know how that is with these kinds of random episodes where it's like you would get Jack Black in one episode and then Giovanni in another episode. It's like, no, you put them both in the same mm. one as like best friends. It's interesting uh, that they just so happen to end up in the same episode together when there's 24 episodes this season. Yeah. It just feels like they could have been, but they're a really good team, and yes. I I do like them together. I would have I'd love to see more of them uh, in a different type of film, um, but yeah, I think they play off of each other really well. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and you know, uh, this guy is a dick. On the Virtual Fighter, wow, that's a game I haven't thought of in a long time. Uh, that was one of the games that kind of just fell to the wayside. They they put out a few, 
but it was like trying to compete with Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, which were like, you know, and then Tekken um, came along as well. And Virtual Fighter is one that was was similar, but it had like um, it had a very the graphics were supposed to be more impressive of the time, mm. but it just never hung on because it never had any personality. It was very flat. Um, it was just more like focus on, on these like interesting three dimensional graphics versus like building actually interesting looking characters with like backstories, like, you know, all the characters from street fighter and, and mortal Kombat. That's why they made movies out of mortal Kombat and street fighter. And Oh, would you know it? No virtual fighter movie. <laughs> yep. um, but they only made like one live action Street Fighter movie. And they've, well, that's not true. They made the, the Legend of Chung Lee, which I never fucking saw. Mm. Uh, but Mortal Kombat has had a lot of shit now at this point. Um, and with a, another sequel on the way. Um, but yeah, he, he tries to like bully him. And, you know, pushers get pushed. So says Storm of the Century. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I mean. Does the guy deserve to die in a show? Yes. <laughs> and so I'm like totally fine with him dying in this. Uh, he's a prick. Um, it's funny to me, like, because the bullying types that are supposed to be like the cool guys, they're not arcade gamers. No. That's, that's so no. silly to yeah. me. I'm like, what, what bully? Like, He's like twenty something years old. What what guy like that is getting off his shift and going to play virtual fighter so much so that he would like fight people over it? Yeah, I just I'm not buying it. I I also think this is an f- interesting opening because uh, DPO like he you think he's like because he's being bullied and you kind of think that he's gonna be this like underdog Tragic type character, of character yeah. that mm-hmm. like is killing or hurting you know killing people that are trying to hurt him but he ends up because oh, he's no. the full-on villain like oh, he yeah. is the bad guy for sure yeah so well they play him and, and giovanni gets cast like this quite often um i think he just plays mentally handicapped really well uh the other sister as i had already previously mentioned the gift um and others i, I just he's played mentally handicapped quite often and his character here is definitely not, you know, going to be approved as a Mensa member. He is, he seems to be um, lacking in some mental abilities. I, I don't know exactly what I would classify him as. He's not like full on, like mentally retarded. <laughs> like, I don't know what he is. He He's off though. He's definitely, mm-hmm. like, slow. He's definitely kind of dumb. And I think that um, he's mad about the fact that he can't have anything he wants in his mm-hmm. eyes. because it, So, like, there's this, like, so there's, like, a balance to things, right? To where, like, there's people who are, I, I say this about myself, like, I'm smart enough to know the problems, but I'm not smart enough to fix them. So mm-hmm. I'm like, I can see the problems in the world and I'm smart enough to, to be a, like, to, to understand them. But like, I don't have the capacity to come up with solutions for them. Like I can say random shit, but I'm not going to go out and fix them myself. Um, as to where with this one, it's like, He's kind of like smart enough to know his limitations Mm -hmm. as to where people who have mental handicaps, a lot of the times they're just, it's like ignorance is bliss. It's like, they're just totally stoked. Like, yeah, yeah, everything's fine. Like I'm, you know, I'm happy with who I am. I feel like he is just smart enough to know he's limited and that he, his, and therefore his options are limited and he couldn't get it. He couldn't get the girl like his teacher that he wants and he's pissed off about it and when he's given that power it's like now i have power and i can have anything i want yeah i think that um i mean i think that people i think he can tell that people treat him differently yeah 
and that makes him upset. And then having this like ability now, he's like, I'm special. Yeah, right. In exactly. a really good way. Yeah. Um, but it does. He does go power crazy for sure. And I think it's like you know a lifetime of feeling very powerless. Yep. And it sucks for sure because I think that this. Um, episode like I think that this story could be done whether or not he was mentally handicapped Um, like the character could be interchanged with any Um, but it is an interesting like look at at that kind of a character here's a question for you do you think he becomes a killer if he does not get these powers Maybe. Is, is the powers... I don't know. Like, well, I don't, is, is having the power what, what makes him go to the dark side? I'm or was he say, destined for that anyway? Was yeah, he just going to use knives or guns? <laughs> I'm going to say yes, he would have still ended up... Because I think it's already inside of him. I think that the fact that he's angry and violent i don't think that the light and unless you want to look at it like he is like changed by the lightning like something happens physically, yeah we don't know him before but i think as far as just like his attitude and personality i think that he already is a violent person and maybe not i mean maybe because he wouldn't have been able to like hurt people in the same way with as like little repercussions as he thinks he can he wouldn't have lashed out as much like yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that would have, like, had a barrier to him. But I think he eventually would have tried to do something. He just... I don't think he would have been able to kill as many people. This guy's got mass shooter energy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there was like, no doubt I mean, as soon as it. he gets his hand on a gun, he's like, all right, this is my special trait. Like, I can just shoot people now. Yeah. So... Well, and he also, like, when he has this power, he goes and kills cows for fun. I know. Right? That's and they've awful. done nothing to him. And then he also uses his power to make cars run into each other. Yeah. Right? That's so this I mean. is just evil. He's just like, just he wants to cause like violence and chaos. So now we do get some indication because we do not see him before this. We don't know who he is. But we do know to some degree because when they are talking to the teacher that he's in love with, she says, like, I wasn't stupid. I could tell he had a crush on me. Yeah. And you could tell that she was very uncomfortable with him in general. Yeah. So this is something where he has had advancements towards her in the past and maybe too aggressively. And she's, like, tried to be cool about it because he is mentally handicapped to a degree. She's kind of like, well, you know, I'm trying to be easy on him. But I, I don't know. Do I think he would have killed people eventually without the power? I don't think so. I don't. I think that the power is what like corrupts him mm. because he is given the ability to have the upper hand. That's what makes him power crazy. Mm. But without it, I don't think he has any confidence. And I don't think he would ever think he could do anything about it. Right, that's what I take from this character is that once given the power, he does terrible things with it. But prior to that, he was just kind of an insignificant nobody who was always going to believe he was. Mm. That's that's how I read the character because of his relationship with his best friend, who seems to be like you've changed. Mm. Right, that's a good point. It's because of how his friend like reacts that. to him that it's kind of like you are not the same person I knew at all. Like. Mm. Because his friend rejects everything about how he handles things. Mm. It's like, no, if he was hanging around with dick, like dick bags that were like, yeah, kill the guy, whatever. Then I'd be like, yeah, okay. This is the kind of people he was hanging out with prior. And so therefore that's what kind of people he was attracting with the kind of person he was. But Jack Black's character does not seem malicious or nefarious in the slightest. And I don't feel like he'd have that kind of friend if he had, you know, school shooter vibes previous to that. That's a good point. Yeah, that he does act like he's changed. And he works in a a mechanic shop with the teacher's husband. And he seems to be like a good employee to him because they've never had any discrepancies in the past. He totally trusts him in the shop. So not that, you know, school shooters and mass shooters 
Uh, most times when people are interviewed, I think this is mostly just them covering their ass to be completely honest. But regardless, they always say he was just such a quiet boy. I would have never been able to tell outside of those times that he told me he was going to shoot up the school. <laughs> and I found uh, pictures of uh, his classmates with X's over their heads and guns everywhere in his bedroom. Um, Yikes. But uh, yeah, so he wears... Only Vandal's shirts yeah. in this episode, which I thought was interesting. We get to hear Filter's song, Hey Man, Nice Shot. Shout out to the movie Demon Knight that starts with this song. Mm. Um, there was a rumor when I was a kid that this song was about Kurt Cobain killing himself. Mm. Um, I, I think that's total horseshit. That's like one of those uh, urban legend type of things. But uh, great song. Um, Filter has some some pretty rad songs, and it was cool to hear uh, a great song from the '90s in here because we don't get many. It's not like we got like Nirvana or Soundgarden or Smashing Pumpkins or you know Alice in Chains or anything like popping up in these episodes. So to have him wearing Vandal shirts and to get Filter's uh, "Hey Man, Nice Shot" was was pretty cool. Very punk rock mm. of of this. Um, at the end of the at, this was kind of cool a little meta thing here so at the very end of the episode after they've caught him he's you know expired his energy and they're of course studying him once again mm -hmm. uh he should be put in the same facility with uh the soft dude. light yes yeah, soft yeah. light guy yeah. um they could work together right um team up uh he he's changing the channels on the television and then he like um flips the tv and uh, it's like created by mm -hmm. Chris Carter on yeah. his television. I like that a lot. That was a great shot. So really great shot. And I think this episode is written by Chris Carter. So like, it's very meta thing, yeah. right? I know he created the show, but like he also created this character and this episode, and it's almost like a meta nod mm -hmm. to like, I was created by this guy. Yeah, right. I really like like that. I'm evil because Chris <laughs> Carter made me that way. That's true. Right. Like, cre I created this monster. You know what I mean? Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. So anyway, that's that. Yeah. Uh, anything more to say about this one? No, I think that's... Oh, the one other thing I wanted to say, because I, I always point these things out, and I wanted to continue to keep pointing them out. I want to, I'm glad I remembered this. But once again, Mulder's straight up clairvoyant. He goes over, there's a thousand fucking oh, arcade machines yeah. in the thing, and he walks right over to fucking Virtual Fighter. Like He walks around for like a little bit, and then he comes over and he's like, who's DPO? And then he's like, Scully, what's the name of the guy who first, you know, uh, was struck by lightning and, and survived? And she's like, she says the name and it's like, D what's his middle name? And DPO, oh, the, like the fact that he noticed that of all of it, it's just it's supposed to be he's super observant. But this is ridiculous. I think that Mulder <coughs> is a little bit. Not a little bit. I think he's autistic. <laughs> I think he has, like... He's psychically autistic, yeah. maybe. Yeah. He has what? I just... Yeah, I mean... He's he, on the spectrum. He is on the spectrum. I do think he is on the spectrum. And I do think that he observes and notices little details. But like we talked about before, I also think that he is psychically led at times, for sure. So, I like those moments. This one isn't completely unexplainable. He just so happened to see the screen. Every name is exactly the same yeah. all the way down. He sees DPO, and then he's like, wait, wasn't that the initials of the guy? Yeah, yeah, I don't it's think it's outside the room. plausible, but it's like a 1% plausibility, kind of like the Saw movies. And as long as it remains 0.01% plausible, even if it's the most minute chance of plausibility, I'm fine with that. Yeah. And even if not with this show, whatever. Unless it's just, like, egregious. Unless it's, like, in my face, like, no. Like, there is there is stuff that will pop up that you're like, no. That's too far. I'm sorry. And this isn't one of them. But I just found it funny that he's just, like, walks in with 500 different machines and he's like, DPL. Yes. Like, come on. It's convenient. <laughs> it's ridiculous. That's, like, the menu in freaking uh, Humbug, you know. Mm. The damn Fiji mermaid drawing. Where's this guy? Like, what? Anyway. All right, that's that. DPO. Adios. Bye.